Okay guys, we're here today for Marcelo Garcia, huge honor for me. I used to train and teach here and it was one of the best times of my life. And uh, guys, I think I don't even need to talk much about him. I think he's probably like the most impressive Nogi grappler in the history of Jiu-Jitsu. I mean like uh, we were talking about a guy, how, how much you weigh Marcelo, when you were competing in ABC? 17. Yeah, 17 that made to the Open Class Finals. That probably is, is the person who has the most submissions in the history of ABCC. So, super, super happy to be here with him today. And guys, today Marcelo is going to show us here what to do in order to have like a great butterfly game. So, he's very, very well know about his butterfly game and his butterfly attacks. And today we're going to understand here what you have to do to develop like this great butterfly game. So, I'm super, super excited to learn from him. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it, man. Um, one thing that people don't think that is like a... You're gonna do a move, but you gotta do a next move. You can be, you can do a great move. You can hit a great takedown. You can pass someone's guard, but they, this is not gonna finish. The only thing that's gonna finish, you got a submission. So usually you don't get a submission right away. So you have to get used to connect one move to the other. So if you if you're gonna connect one, move, if you're gonna do a move, you have to be ready to do the next move too. And I believe like everybody needs need to train, think about the next move. You need to do a great move to begin, but you have to have a great move next. And you have to have like a hope to get, to have a great move to finish. So imagine like starting your feet over here. Very few moves you probably like uh, gonna be able to do without touch the other person. You're gonna just take a shot from far away. But most of the time you're gonna have to get a hold of it. As I'm gonna get a hold of it, I wanna bring you to my game. And, I, and I'm not expecting to just walk into my game. I have to pull you. I have to drag you inside my game. So every time I'm sitting over here, I have to, have to pull you really close. But every time I, I, I bring you to my game, I, I got to know what, what to expect. So for example, maybe you can come too strong and start to put a lot of pressure on me and you start to come really close. If I feel like it's, it's not the right time, I can just kind of back away. But I know you're on my game. And then if you continue to do that, you know, and if you continue to come really close, you know, I, mean, I have to have the right reaction. But you continue to come forward. I cannot just move and run away from you because I'm going to end up kind of like a, be like everybody. So I have to connect the next move. So I was thinking about if I pull you close and then you continue to put pressure on me, and, I, and I'm maybe I'm not ready to put pressure, I can keep a distance, but as you keep coming close, I'm going to have to get like my, my shin in front of your shin. Because now if you come really close to me, I take off without the ground and you cannot really move and fall. Move close, 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 close. You just take your foot out the ground and you cannot really kind of like move and fall. Back, back. So step closer, step closer. I can just keep this far away. As you put pressure now, put pressure, I just take your foot out the ground. With your foot out the ground, you're probably not going to be able to kind of put pressure on me anymore. Because you need your foot on the ground, you need to drive to put pressure on me. So if I get your foot on the ground, I stop your move, and then from here I have all the options. Now you're, you're my game. I can go forward, go to one like X-Corrupt. I can stay here and drive for both legs. Or, if you get to the point that we just talked about, if I pull you close, and then you're like, I'm not ready to move forward. This guy is pulling to his game and I'm not ready to move forward. If he starts pulling his arm back, you know, I have to make it really hard. If he starts with, and then I connect my, my feet behind your ankle. Come back, come back. I connect my feet behind your ankle at the same time that I'm pushing with both knees. One more time, you pull. And now I'm going to just push at the same time. As you fall, I have to connect. I cannot let you fall and I cannot connect the next move. So if I hit the move, I move forward. Go again. So I pull, you start moving back, I push, and get it close. And I know we talk about the butterfly guard, but I need people to think about what's going to come next. So if I have a great success of like sweeping, if I have a great success to hit the move that I practice like the whole way, but I know what comes next, I need to know. If I drill that move like a hundred times this week, and I finally did the move, I need to know like a, where I land. How I land, what my opponent does when they when they land in this position. So I need to respect the next position. So based on that, when I pull your guard, I'm gonna try trip and try to get my both ankles over you. 
But if you have a strong base, then you're gonna pull one leg back, you know? And then maybe you're like, a, you're not gonna fall. And then I'm gonna like, a, I cannot just back away from the position because mm -hmm. I been here before. So if I trip with both and then back step, I need to connect the next move. And it has to be something quick. I cannot have to climb your back and you go and try to get a choke. So it has to be something quick. So as soon as I pull this and I don't have both angles, I miss the move. I'm just connect, I'm just connect something else. And I believe what makes one move great is a move that you can do all the time. A move that you, you don't have to think too much to make the move. You can just go and like connect the next move and connect the next move and yeah. don't let you think too much what to do to me. Okay. You can think how to defend my moves, but I don't want you to think about how I'm gonna finish this guy, how I'm gonna attack this guy, how I'm gonna set up this guy. So I, I want you to be most like under my attack and not like thinking about how you're gonna do something to me. If you want my attack, probably I have a lot of chance to keep you leading you to yeah. one place that probably like, I'm gonna be able to finish it. And I believe like a, a lot of people miss this in Jiu-Jitsu. And sometimes because they they think about Jiu-Jitsu just like the the sport Jiu-Jitsu. And they think about the sport just like, oh, I just need to do one advantage. I need to do one takedown. I need to score in the last 40 seconds so the other person cannot score back on me. But this is not doing Jiu-Jitsu. You're kind of almost like wasting your Jiu-Jitsu. You waste your time. So I believe like uh, when you do a move, you want to look for the next move so you can, you can finish. Okay. And I believe that's the safest way so you don't have a chance to do anything to me. I, I okay. take a full control and I, I, and I guide you just where I want. And yeah. not a place that you, you've been trained like a, every day to yeah. put me in. A, yeah. Well, Marcelo, and the, you just showed a bunch of examples here when the person is standing. Very early I used to train you, for example, I'm the type of person who passed on the news. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty much like all the sequence that you were showing standing. I remember training with you, it was the same concept. You would hit me for one sweep, if I defend the sweep, mm -hmm. you would go to the leg like, action and that. So can you show some examples like of this connection when I'm on my knees? Ben um, like you said, not many people are gonna like you standing up. Yeah. If they stand up, then they can move fast, but at the same time they're more exposed. Yeah. You know, when they're more exposed, like their legs right in front of you. You can't hear hook them. You can single leg their leg. You can uh, hang with the leg and go to their back. But when you're on your knees, you compact. You kind of, uh, you set your base on the ground. So you don't have to move if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to find a way to just get you to move. But at the same time, now if I try to get too close to you and then you push me too hard, I don't want to just give up and fall on my back. I have to be able to stop over here. And one of the ways that I realize to stop when every time you push on me, I don't want to, I don't want to feel like your weight on my, on my chest because I'm not going to be able to carry all the weight. Every press you put on me, I want you, I want you to put on my shoulder. And I, and I want to find just the right, I want to find just the right angle that you cannot push me back. That I'm not going to feel like I'm, I'm unfolding. So every time you're able to push me, I'm just going to get myself really low. And then from here, I can start to connect. If you push me, I, I need to feel strong, but I need to feel like a ready to attack. So posture is one of the most important things. At least to begin a position. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to be posture, but if I want to have an option to attack, I need to make sure like yeah. a, I have a good posture. Right, and that makes a lot of sense because I'm much heavier than you. And I remember training through, we always be thinking like, how can I put this back on the ground? It's, how can I do that? <laughs> it's, a, it's a great start. You yeah. know? I mean, if, you, if you put the other person back on the mat, that's how you kind of like yeah. get him stable, get him oh, yeah. in, in the move. You know? Yeah, but of course, close impossible. So, uh, yeah, and, then, and then from here, imagine like uh, you, you try pressure me, you try pressure me, and, and I, 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 didn't, I didn't fall back. A lot of is related to my feet. If, if my feet goes up, if push, push, push. If my feet goes up, I fall back. So once I get my shoulder down, you know, my feet has to stay heavy. And then once you start really pressure to really kind of try do anything to me, now I can kind of like use this against you. Really if yeah. you not connect to me, it's another thing. You, you're avoiding, you're running away from me. And that obviously like, not everybody likes to do that. I don't think everybody trained for that. But every time the person try like, a, uh, okay, I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to try pushing. I'm going to try drive against him. They start to end up more exposed. Yeah. So if I'm over here and they start pushing, and then I, I, I found a very strong angle that you cannot really push me, but they keep pushing me. And my feet is still on the ground. 
as you, you keep pushing, my both hand goes inside. I just want to act like a good, good like a uh, butterfly drop for me. Because now I want to connect the hands and I want to be able to kind of like a, I want to squeeze your elbows together. And then from here I can go, I can go and see which way you give it to me. Doesn't matter my head, they're not like that. If you put your weight to your left, and if you still put your weight to your left, I can go over there. But if at any moment like, you change and stop with your weight on the other side, I can go over there either. So, goes to that point that we talked about. It has to be something that is easy to do. When I say easy, easy to do, easy to apply. It's a move that like, uh, I don't have to move too much. I don't have to be flexible. I have to just be on the right time. And I don't have to be faster than you. Oh, yeah. Even like, obviously, like someone light is gonna be faster than the other. But when, when you find someone like at the same uh, weight than you, you don't have to be faster than the other person. You just have to move before him. Oh, yeah. It's almost like a race. We're gonna race, but I'm gonna start ahead of you. Yeah. We race, we're gonna start, we, we, we're gonna start uh, on the same place, but I wanna take off first. Oh, yeah. well, it's almost like a, a cheating in a race, you know what I mean? Because yeah. you can just take off first. That's what you're doing here. I'm not gonna wait till you move so I can move. Oh, yeah. I assume that, I, assume that like, I have a chance I'm gonna try and move first. Oh, yeah. And you gotta take advantage of this. You know? No, man, that's all right. Oh, but I think one thing that differentiates you from all the other athletes is that uh, you have a regular body type. So you are not like a crazy strong guy. You, you are exactly like our customers, for example. You have a regular size, you're not like the muscle person. So do you think this is what makes your Jiu Jitsu so efficient? Is the connection? It's a good posture, connections, yeah, and always try to be one step ahead. Using the connections, then I'm, I'm a middleweight. So when you talk about middleweight, right. like I'm not light and I'm not that heavy. Oh, yeah. So I'm just like a middleweight. So maybe that can be like an average guy, you know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. a, and if you're gonna say I'm athletic, I can you can say I'm athletic, but I'm not, I was an athletic when I started Jiu Jitsu. Oh, yeah. I obviously, like after like a, a 20 some years of Jiu Jitsu, you start to feel like oh, he's athletic, but I wasn't athletic at all. So I believe like anyone, anyone that doesn't feel athletic, he still can do really good jiu-jitsu. And flexibility, I, I build some flexibility, but I'm not a flexible guy. I don't yeah. think my, I don't think I begin jiu-jitsu with a flexibility. That flexibility was, was developed, you know what I mean? And yeah. not a lot, just enough. Okay. So I, I, I feel like it's a lot more like a, what I just said. We're gonna begin a race, me against you, but I'm gonna start ahead of you. Okay. And that's what jiu-jitsu allows you. You can, you can always kind of like a, a, take a lead before the other person has a chance. Uh, uh, you can always kind of trick and, and, and surprise your opponent. And then, the only way to trick and surprise your opponent is like, take him to where you know it and he's not. You know? yeah. If I start going to your game, and I let you kind of like a pull me towards your game, I don't think I'm gonna have like a, a, a good answer, or the right answer. Okay. Or maybe, I have the answer, but maybe my answer is not on, on the same time than you, because that's yeah. your game. So I think what makes like a, the odds on my favor is that you you constantly should be on my game and not I should be on your game. Oh, yeah. You should be on my game. You know? Good, no oh, man, that's awesome. Yeah, so guys, we are showing an entire structure with Marcel, all about his butterfly game, like showing every single connection, every single position that he that he does, like in order. So it's coming out like really, really good. And very soon it's going to be at bjjfanatics.com. So maybe by the time you're watching, it's already there. And I'm super, super excited about it. Thanks so much for sending me. Thank you, Brandon. Yes. Thank you. For more free videos, follow my Instagram. And if you liked this video, tag your friends in the comments. Oh.